Welcome to this free GNS3 practice lab for the CCNA. Once again, for this video, I will be using GNS3, not Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is great, but there are many things which it doesn't support, such as multi-link PPP from the previous lab and PPPoE, which we will configure in this lab. You can download the GNS3 file from the link in the description. I will also include the name of the iOS image file I used. However, I cannot legally give you the file itself. If you need help getting GNS3 set up, please look around on Google or YouTube. David Bomble, for example, has many videos on GNS3 setup. In this lab, we will configure PPPoE, which stands for Point-to-Point -point Protocol over Ethernet. The original PPP which we have been configuring so far, was used on serial interfaces. PPPoE, however, allows us to encapsulate PPP into Ethernet frames. The service provider routers have been pre-configured, so let's configure the two client routers, R1 and R2, to use PPPoE for their connections to the service provider. Let's get started. I'll configure R1 first. Conf T. We are instructed to configure PPPoE with two-way PAP authentication. SPR1 is already configured and is using a hostname of packet and a password of tracer to authenticate. So let's configure that user account on R1. Username packet, password tracer. Okay, now to configure PPPoE, we need to configure a dialer interface first. Interface dialer one. This is a logical interface, which we will later bind to the physical interface G00. First, we have to lower the MTU, the maximum transmission unit, from 1500 to 1492. This is because PPPoE adds another eight byte header so, MTU 1492. Then set the encapsulation. Encapsulation PPP. Next, the IP address. The client, R1, will negotiate its IP address with SPR1 with this command. IP address negotiated. Next, let's enable PAP authentication. PPP Authentication PAP. Then send the username and password as indicated in the topology diagram. PPP PAP sent username Cisco, password CCNA. Now the last step is to assign this to dialer pool one, which we will use later to link it to the physical interface. Dialer pool one is the command. Let's check. Do show run interface dialer one. There's the configuration. MTU 1492, IP address negotiated, encapsulation PPP, dialer pool one, and our PAP authentication. Okay, that's all for the dialer interface. Now let's link it to G00. Interface G00. There's just one command we need here. PPPoE client dial pool number one. Okay, let's enable the interface. No shutdown. End. Let's check the IP address the interface received from the service provider. Show IP interface brief. It's 100.0.0.2 on the dialer interface. But what's this virtual access one interface? Well, it was automatically created. Basically, the dialer interface provides layer three information and the virtual access interface provides layer two information. Don't worry too much about the details about how it works. As long as you can configure it, you should be okay. Let's try to ping the service provider. Ping 100.0.0.1. Okay, looks good. Next, let's configure R2. 
The only difference will be CHAP authentication instead of PAP. Conf T. I'll make the user account. Remember, the username must be the host name of the other router, SPR2, and the password must be the same for both routers, CCNA in this case. So, username, SPR2, password, CCNA. Next, let's configure the dialer interface. Interface dialer 1, MTU 1492, encapsulation PPP, IP address negotiated, PPP authentication CHAP. Okay, and finally, dialer pool 1. Now let's link it to the physical interface. Interface G00. PPPoE client, dial pool number 1. No shutdown. End. Okay, so let's see what IP address the dialer interface got from SPR2. Show IP interface brief. 200.0.0.2 this time. And again, notice the virtual access 1 interface was created as well. Here's one more thing. Show interface dialer 1. Notice here it says bound to and then indicates the virtual access 1 interface. Okay, let's try a ping. Ping 200.0.0.1. Great, it works. Now, like in the previous lab, I'll make static default routes pointing to the service provider and then try to ping from R1 to R2. Conf T. IP route 0.0.0.0, 200.0.0.1. Do show IP route. There it is. Next on R1. Conf T. IP route 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0, 100.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0.0, 200.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.